Howdy folks, my name is Darren from RC Scale Models and today I'm going to be building this USAF YF23 aircraft. It's the uh, aircraft that was competing against the F-22 Raptor. Um, this is Hobby Boss's 148 scale version. Let's do this. Okay, these sections make up the uh, cockpit, which is this, this, and these sections make up the ejector seat, this piece, and... This square piece make up the uh, flight yoke, uh, flight stick, and this is the actual bathtub hole. This comes as already as molded as one piece. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's done. Okay, these sections have been assembled now. I've put the um, pedals in and flight stick. The jet to seat's all, all ready to go. Um, I'm just dry fits it perfectly there. I'm going to paint it separately and then, and then glue it in and here's the instrument panel it needs to be painted and put the uh, decals on the uh, touch screen section so I'm gonna paint this now and I'll show you what it looks like okay I've gone ahead and put the seat in the cockpit I've done dry brushing and what I like to use is Tamir panel line black to go over everything and it gets all in the crevices and causes a wash the seat is flat black with olive green seat but it's gone really dark because of the black wash and the instrument panel is all done with the uh, decals those TV screens they are a little bit flat so what I'm going to do is use Microsoft Crystal Clear which is this stuff to put over the dials and it makes the TV screens a little bit shinier so that's my next step Okay, this section is all complete now. It's all ready for paint and detailing and washes and weathering. Um, but all I'll do is I will paint the inside of the terminal bay probably last. I will look in the instructions more and then work it out. But this is assembly now. Okay, this is all the cockpit assembly now. You can see the dials are just starting to uh, go clear now. It's still a little bit cloudy. That's where the Microsoft Crystal Clear is starting to dry. But this is pretty much how the cockpit's going to stay now. This is pretty much finished. Okay, these sections make up the left side of the wheel well. Um, I'm going to put this together and I'll show you what it looks like. And also, again, like the front wheels. Again, just like the front wheel, you can do the landing gear last, which I'm going to do last. And then once I've done this side, which is the left, I've got to repeat it on the right. Okay, this section is all complete now. I had to do these pipings offline. This piece here is structural. I had to do that off camera because my hands are getting in the way. And these pipes, the bottom one's got to sit on top of the top one, and top one's got to sit on the bottom one. They've got to cross over. And they say uh, my hands are getting in the way, so I've had to film this off camera. This is the left. Now I've got to do the right. I'll show you what they all look like when they're finished. Okay, these sections make up the part of the exhaust system. Um, that's the base. That's all you get for detail. Um, I have nothing else, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to do with what I've got. Um, I would, I would like if this was all done with Fado Etch, but I've looked on the internet and I can't seem to find any aftermarket stuff. So I'm going to have to do with what I've got. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it with burnt iron, and then I'm going to do. A, a light coat over the top with burnt metal texture um, and then I'm gonna probably be doing this uh, after burner ring probably silver or something 
or maybe gold I don't know just to highlight it slightly but there's not a lot else I could do so this section has got to be painted all burnt iron and then a light coat of burnt metal okay I've gone ahead and painted it with the burnt iron and the burnt metal so you've got to see a different texture different shades and I've gone ahead and done this with the uh, gold center and I've done a black center and I'm going to do this with a black Tamir panel line wash to highlight it it should be usual Tamir stuff just highlight the uh, turbine fan blade bit in inside Inside there, go around all around. Um, and that's and go over this as well. And then just let this dry. There isn't a lot else I could do because that's the basics of the kit okay I don't know if, how well you can see this on camera but this is what you get for exhaust system um, unfortunately I wish it was better but this is what you get in the kit so I've got to do another one of these now for the left side okay guys look, these sections are done now which were the exhaust systems and now we are looking to put in Putting them in and got all the cultures inside. Um, you're going to sit in there, and this one sits in there. I'm going to glue these into place now. Okay, the exhaust systems are all in, left and right, and they look like this. But obviously, I've still got to yet to paint inside the exhaust system, which should be the same color. But I'm going to paint these individual like brick tile things. I'm going to break them into different shades, and there's a piece that goes over the top here as well. There's a piece that goes over, but I would do all that probably last. Um, paint the body and then mask off around here and then spray it in the exhaust and then do whatever I need to do. Okay, next step would be painting around this canopy, which would be probably flat black or NATO black, and then also going up here are the tunnels for the air. It's got to be done next. Okay, these segments here make up the uh, airflow for the aircraft, which sit inside here. They ask you to do the inside insignia white. Um, the insignia white I have is the one from Vallejo, so it's the only one I'm going to be using. The landing bay, uh, bomb bays, landing gear is all done in insignia white. Um, unfortunately, you're going to get a bit of a seam line inside there's no way I can take care of that okay the uh, the airflow to the engine is all in unfortunately there's no no more parts to go on it's just this so there's the, uh, the air intakes Now I've got to put the top on. One thing I did forget to mention, before you sandwich in the two halves together, don't forget to put 20 grams of nose weight in. If you can fit a little bit more, maybe do that, just to make sure it's got enough uh, nose weight. Um, what I used for nose weight was 
I had some lead pellets and I use super glue and zap kicker and it makes it go rock solid. So there's about 20 grams in those weight. It should be enough now. Okay folks, I've gone ahead a few steps than uh, I planned. Um, I've got the wings on now and I had a slight rookie mistake by not painting around the edge of the canopy. What you need to do is paint that before putting the fuselage halves together. But me making a slight mistake, I forgot to do that so I had to mask it off. Not a problem. If you're wondering what these black lines are, they are where the wings meet and I wasn't happy with the fit so it required a little bit of body work, filling and whatever. Uh, everything seems fine now. Same as these tips of the wings, they had a little bit of body work on the tips because they weren't quite right. But I uh, put these on and I'll show you what the aircraft looks like almost complete. Um, but it's pretty much ready for paint now. Obviously I've got to put the canopy on, mask it up. But that's the aircraft there guys. It's ready for paint now. I'll show you what that looks like when, when I start that. Okay, this step I've gone ahead and painted the aircraft in its shadow colour and um, kind of like a primer. I wish I've used NATO black for this. My next step is I'm going to do a marble technique on this aircraft. Um, and the marble technique what looks like this. This is what the marble technique looks like. I'm going to do this all over the aircraft. And then I'm going to do its base colour of... Um, carbon grey but the carbon grey is going to be Tamir's 66 but I haven't got enough so I'm going to use this which is H305 by Mr Hobby which is federal standard grey um, so I'm going to use this colour Okay folks, everything's done now on the marble technique. Uh, trust me, it's going to be fine. It looks like a mess, but it's not. I'm going to do its base colour now, which is the uh, gun metal grey colour, gun chip grey. Um, which calls out for, as I say, I'm doing path one, which is the first version of the aircraft, which is slightly darker than path two.
Okay, uh, the base colour's all down now. I've just got to let this dry and it's ready for clear coat. Um, but before I do the clear coat, I've still got to uh, paint the engines in and do a little bit of detail. But the actual, this is the main colour now and this is how it's going to be. This is the marble effect. Um, so I don't know how well you can see that on camera. The underside is the same. the aircraft um, I'm going to let this settle for a little while now and I'll check in when I've done some more ok I've gone ahead and painted the uh, engines its base colour which is like a burnt iron texture I'm going to yet to do different shades of metals um, titanium and plated burnt metal which is going to be in between these brick textures so it breaks it up and it looks like it's been um, heat stressed and stuff like that because obviously uh, it's going to be where the exhaust system comes out and it's going to affect the metal and it's going to be uh, turned different colours and stuff so I'm not going to film this I uh, will show you what it's like when it's done Okay, the second step was uh, I've sprayed titanium over the top of it now, uh, lightly. So that's going to be another texture. And then I've got to mask off some more squares. So it'll be titanium squares. And then um, coat over the top of the, that will be the burnt panel paint. It's done by AK. I'm using these, these products are done by AK. Um, and then... It should be pretty much there and then it's ready for a clear coat and then washes and stuff like that but this is part of the technique I'm, I'm doing for doing the engines okay I've gone ahead and finished off the last color which was AK's burnt panel paint um, so I've used burnt panel burnt iron and titanium to make the exhaust system this is my take on exhaust on different uh, shades of wear on the exhaust system so this is my take I've never done it before I still yet to do like a black wash inside probably so it shows in between those brick textures as I say this is my uh, take on the exhaust Next up would be clear coating this whole beast and it'll be ready for decals. Okay, these part of the exhaust system as well. I think these are called louvers. Um, the sawtooth parts at the top um, on path one, they didn't exist, it was just straight across. These parts were path two, but I'm only building path one, so I've got to take them off. Okay, this is what they look like now, and now they've got to be ready for paint. Okay, also I've gone ahead and painted all the landing gear segments. They, um, once they're dry, they're ready to go inside the aircraft. Um, and also, I will have to do a little bit of wash, so the uh, white's not so stark. Um, so it looks like they've been worn in and used and stuff. Um, and a little bit of weathering around the back of the uh, wheels run by the uh, brakes so they've been worn in a little bit so I'll probably use Tamir's black panel line wash for all this um, as I say my next step will be putting everything into the aircraft and clear coating and putting decals on um, other than that there's not much else to do at the moment okay this section I've gone ahead and um, going to do the decals now uh, I've done a video on these decals because uh, the ones that come with the kit were in incorrect so we can use the correct decals now for path one so we can do the correct aircraft with the correct decals uh, I'm going to do this now and I uh, show you what, not, what it looks like when it's finished okay guys the uh, decals are all, de all down and gone down pretty well use microsol and microset decal solution um, do not use Tamir's TS80 on top because it can affect the decals and can eat decals so 
it's safe to use testers Dell coat on top once the decals are dry. Um, I'm going to let the decals cure for 24 hours before applying the, the clear coat. But the decals have gone down pretty well. The next step I say is clear coat and then it'd be all finished. Okay folks, I want to talk about this landing gear. If you see here on the instructions, you see this segment here, D9, which is little support piece. Doesn't explain it very well where it goes on the side. So what I've had to do is stick it kind of close, but I will show you what I mean. And also the main wheel strut, uh, which is D40, they go in fine. But the uh, front landing gear, here the front landing gear, um, you see this piece here at the bottom of the landing gear is slightly too long. So you could be warned, you're going to have to slightly cut it down for it to fit. Um, it says it just drops in, but it's not the case. Around the edge, of the landing gear there's a slight lip and it catches on these pins that sit on the side so you have to turn it sideways drop it twist it in to get it underneath the lip it's not as easy as they explain it just to drop it down this is the landing gear all ready just waiting for this to glue and it'll be ready for washes and the side landing gears again if you see just here is that little piece I was on about. It's not explaining it very well, so I've just had to glue it kind of close. Um, and the other side is the same. So there you go, guys. That's the aircraft. I will check in when it's complete now. Okay, these segments are the landing gear doors. You will have to glue those pins on. Um, just make sure you glue them very fairly straight because otherwise it can have a knock on effect of trying to line them up. But now this is all drying. Once this is dry, it'll be ready for the insignia white like it is on the air landing gear. Once that's dry, it's ready for washes and to fit these to the aircraft. Okay, folks, the aircraft is all complete now. This is the final finished product of my uh YF23, it's all finished now. Um, yeah, it's come out pretty well. It's a pretty good kit. There isn't many issues, um, apart from the uh, landing gear not being shown in instructions properly, just where the alignment and placement goes. Um, we have a slight knock-on effect on the wings if you don't get them lined up. Um, I haven't glued in these because they, in the real aircraft, they, they rotate and that's what makes the aircraft turn and stuff because that is technically the whole tire rudder. Um, the aircraft's come out work pretty well like I mentioned. Um, I want to do another one, but I want to do path 2, which is the lighter version, which has got the slight camouflage on it. This is path 1, which is the first prototype, which is the darker one. Um, yeah, it's pretty good aircraft, like I mentioned before. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, I want to get some F-22 Raptors and stuff to uh, go with it, because that's the, the F-22 Raptor and this was competing in contracts so I would like to uh, have one of those in my collection um, I made this base quickly knocked it up if you're interested in of knowing how this base was made I will make another one it's pretty easy just used poster card spray several colors of grey beige and tan Put in the squares, they're roughly 20 centimeter squares. Um, mark out some lines, which is taxi one way markings. I presume they're not 100% sure what the markings mean on airfields, but 
some of them will tell me I imagine you've got different markings for different reasons so I copied some of the markings by just doing a uh, simple half circle stripe I think might be letting you know which way to uh, taxi and stuff but I'm not quite sure but it's an easy base to do like comment subscribe and I'll catch you later